Did you know that if you understand time signatures, you can understand and beat bosses easier in Bloodborne? I didn't either, but it seems to be true for the Dark Souls games as well. I responded to the Game Theories episode on the rhythm of Dark Souls, but it appears the Escapist is claiming the same argument for Bloodborne with this video released in November of 2021. So instead of responding to points in the video, let's put everything to the test and see, and you know I'm getting serious when I'm now editing in 60 FPS. So does knowing the time signature of the boss music help you in Bloodborne? So before I can dive into analyzing the bosses and the music, we need a baseline for what the arguments are. In the Game Theory episode, the claim was that the dancer attacks in 3-4 because the music is in 3-4. There was one attack shown, but there were holes in that presentation, so I can't take much more from that. The Escapist video, we have a little bit more. He says the bosses attack in rhythm with the downbeat of each bar. And in Bloodborne, the developers have geniusly timed the boss's string of attacks to be timed to these accents. Father Gascoigne's attacks are then timed with these pulses. He will initiate his string of attacks to line up on these accents. And once the player has fallen into this rhythm, it allows for them to subconsciously predict when attacks are actually going to be coming. He does say that this is for most bosses in the game, so I'm going to analyze three from Bloodborne and two from Dark Souls 3. Father Gascoigne and the Blood Starved Beast are the two he mentions, so I'll do those. And I'll look at Lady Maria as well, and I'll talk about why later. For Dark Souls 3, I'll do the same test for the Dancer of the Boreal Valley as well as the Nameless King, since those were mentioned in the Game Theory video, as well as the comments section on the Escapists video. The biggest issue I have with these arguments is that they never show examples of it. What's worse is that people just believe it, so I want to put it to the test and actually show examples either proving or disproving this idea. I know going into it you'd think I'm against it, which is true, but I'm actually going to try to prove them correct and give them some advantages. But first, I want to mention that strategy guides for the bosses don't mention the music or the time signatures at all. You'd think if this was indeed an important mechanic that guides would mention it. But I will give a little credit to the fact that Austin said it was the secret rhythm. Also note that the wiki pages for these games don't mention the music connection either. If it was an important implementation by the developers, you'd think these pages would include that information as well. Also before I get into testing these ideas, I have to disprove the time signature aspect and show what we really need to be testing. The denominator of the time signature doesn't matter at all. If it did, that means everyone playing these games needs to understand the time signatures. But that actually isn't the case if these arguments prove to be true. Here's what I mean. Let's listen to this. What's the time signature? 3-4 or 4-4? Four, four? That seems like a silly question to ask, it should be obvious if it's in 3 or 4. Well, here's why it's in 4. That makes sense to me, and even conductors will conduct it this way. Now let's look at the music. The music's in 3-4? Musicians performing this will understand what's going on, but your average Joe with no musical training is not going to understand, and that's why implementing a tie between the boss attacks and a time signature would be a poor choice by the developers. So the time signature isn't important. The meter of the music is what we actually care about and what actually matters for the arguments they are making. So going forward, I'm going to ignore the denominator, because it really could be any number, and it wouldn't make a difference. And, going about it this way, I can give more chances for their argument to be correct. So I'm actually helping them out here. The music playing for the boss fight with Father Gascoigne is called The Hunter, and the escapist correctly identifies that this music is indeed in 4. So for the argument to work, we would expect the attack patterns to line up with the first beat of every bar of music. So let's watch a little bit of this boss fight and see how well you can hear the downbeat of each bar.
This is the first issue I have with this argument. The sound balance has the music too low in the mix to be a reliable source of information. With the sound effects of everything going on, you can't hear the rhythm of the music, and this would be especially difficult if we have an odd time signature too. I will admit it is easier to hear the rhythm of the music in other boss fights, but if this was an intended mechanic, you'd think it would be a universal truth. Since it's not, this would be a poor design choice if the music was actually an important tool for information. But we do have the argument that this is the hidden or secret rhythm of these bosses, so let's test it further. How about we boost the music so it's our primary audio focus? I'll go one step further and provide a visual aid for the downbeats as well so there's no doubt where our downbeat is. To save time, I won't show the entire fight, but I will highlight key moments for the argument we are exploring. And I'm actually going to start out by proving them correct. First would be this section where each attack is actually about the same distance apart as our downbeat, lending some evidence to this idea. The problem is that these attacks are slightly off the beat, some being before, some being after. We can still make the argument that it's a guide to roughly when the boss will attack, but could this just be a coincidence? The majority of attacks are around the downbeat of the bar, but sometimes it's when the animation starts, sometimes it's when the attack happens, and sometimes it's right after the attack. How do you know which it's going to be? Considering each downbeat is about 80 frames apart, or 1.3 seconds, that honestly isn't going to be useful information. So if we have a string of attacks like here, we need to know if we already need to be dodging, dodge right at, or slightly after each downbeat. How is the music going to be useful? It really isn't, and serves as a nice easter egg instead that the boss attacks are close to the downbeat of each bar. Since this boss happened to be close, I went ahead and checked out other videos of this fight to see if it was just a coincidence that I found a matching version. In this one, here's a string of attacks. <laughs> none of which are around the downbeat of the bar. There is one more spot we can check to see if it lines up, and that's in the Escapist video where there are these four attacks. And once the player has fallen into this rhythm, it allows for them to subconsciously predict when attacks are actually going to be coming. And it's not just the rhythm that sets the- The first two happen to almost be right on beat, but the next two attacks are near beats of the music. Considering the music here is at a steady 90 BPM, it doesn't matter if the music matches the footage for the argument to hold true. All four of these attacks should at least be on the same beat of the bar, which they are not. How about the Blood Starved Beast? The Escapist correctly identifies the music as being in 5, but the music follows more of a 3-2 progression like this. I'm actually pointing this out to give this argument that the boss attacked with the music more chances to be correct. So what this means is we actually get two strong beats every bar that are slightly different timings apart. Despite this, we have several attacks that are not on either of those beats. And the music actually gives us a brass accent on beat 5 in one section, which the boss lines up an attack with. So to me, this could mean that the boss will choose a random beat to attack on, and when each beat is only 24 frames or two-fifths of a second, it's easy to just make an argument any attack is in time with the music. But how is knowing the music is in 5 going to help us in that case? It's not. So why did I make the choice to include Lady Maria? There are several reasons. One is this comment on the Escapist video that references an attack and how you can use three beats to time a dodge. All right. We actually have some evidence, and what's better is that Lady Maria's music is in 3. This means that attack should line up perfectly with the music and gives us some concrete evidence. But first, let's listen to what was actually said about this attack and how to time a dodge. If she holds her weapon down to her side, you have to dodge exactly 2 seconds after the ding. Not 1 second, like before, 2 seconds. So, ding, 1, dodge. Get the pacing in your head, ding. One, dodge. There are two points to take from this clip. 
The first is the timing. It's two seconds from the ding, which by me counting the frames, it's just under two seconds, but I'll give it to him. This means that the music will need to be at 60 BPM if we are dodging on beat three, and that this lines up with the music. Before revealing that, let's look at this other part of the clip I alluded to, and that's this line. Not one second, like before. What does he mean before? This is from a few seconds earlier where he talked about a different attack. It's her quick charge attack. Exactly one second after you hear the, you have to dodge. Once you hear the ding, dodge. Ding, dodge. So now we just have a ding and dodge one second later. Again, that means the music should be at 60 BPM, but now we are dodging on beat two, which I guess would be fine since it lines up the music and you need to know which beat based on her animation, but now the attack has nothing to do with the music being in three. This is where the music comes into play and there are several problems. The first is that this music changes tempo and meter. The other two were actually solid on their tempo and meter, but here it changes, which I'll admit is not the worst thing in the world for our argument we are exploring, since the speed of her attacks could change with the music. The second issue is that the music changes meter from three to four. So now I have to ask the question, when the music changes to be in four, does that mean her attacks shift to four or stay in three? At this point, the music is also slower, going from 105 BPM to 73. We analyzed two attacks that would line up with 60, which actually includes multiples of 60, but 105 and 73 won't work. Here's two sections of this boss fight with downbeat shown and how her attacks don't line up. One from the beginning with the music in three at 105 BPM and one from later that's in four at 73. So there's those three bosses from Bloodborne down and disproven that their attacks have to do with the music. So let's jump to Dark Souls 3 where I have a few things to point out. I have to make a correction to something I said in the other video. I disproved Austin by saying the Nameless King's music is in three while he said the boss attacks in four. Even the incredibly challenging Nameless King. The Nameless King attacks in 4-4? Four, four? Then why is the music in 3-4? The music I was listening to was this, which on the soundtrack is labeled as the Nameless King, but this boss fight is in two phases. The first, with the King of the Storm, has that music playing. When that phase is over, you then fight the Nameless King, and this music plays. which is actually in a similar situation to the Beethoven example I played earlier. This might be in a fast three or a slow four. So let's see if the boss attacks line up with the music. I'm sure you can guess the answer. And finally, we make it full circle back to the Dancer of the Boreal Valley, where there's this comment on the Escapist video agreeing with the idea Austin presented. And this time around, I'm going to put the Dancer to the test, and I'm going to look in the dreaded comments section as there are some things we can look at and talk about there as well. One thing that is a common thread in the comments is that there are plenty of people saying that the music is actually in 6-8, not 3-4. In the end, it doesn't really matter, but here's my guess as to why they think it's in 6-8. Since there's a lot of notes that are on beats 1, then 3, then 1, like here, those individuals are hearing it as a 6-8 pattern that you hear in marches.
So instead of seeing this, you'd see this. It's all in your perspective of the meter, which doesn't matter for how the boss lines up with it because each dotted quarter beat in 6-8 are the accents we are looking for. So it's the same as every downbeat in 3-4. So going forward, I'm going to talk about this in 3 and not 2 or 6 because that then requires me to explain meter in more detail, which is unnecessary for this video, but a topic I am working on. 3-4 is the time signature for waltz music is another comment that pops up. Yes, that's true, but what does that have to do with the boss music here? Yes, they both are in 3-4, but that doesn't mean there's a connection. We could take it one step further by this comment that mentions other church-dwelling bosses are in 3-4 as well because of the Holy Trinity and churches required music to be in 3-4. This is just as bad as the tritone being banned. Watch Adam Neely's video disproving that idea, but for this one, let's take a look at some masses by a Renaissance composer, Josquin Dupré. Excuse my bad pronunciation. And let's see if all of it's in some form of 3 meter. Nope, not all in 3-4, so that theory is easily busted. I'm not going to bother checking if those other boss themes are in 3-4, because it doesn't matter more than maybe a cute coincidence if they are. Finally, looking at this comment, we have evidence of attacks lining up with the music. I've disproven four bosses so far, could I be wrong about this one? Let's find out. Well, those two attacks certainly do line up with the music we hear, but let's watch a fight with the dancer with the music boosted and the accents shown. There are two phases to this fight to look at. Austin says three while showing four, but there's an abrupt cut in the music where we transition into the second phase, and according to the wiki on the boss, it's two phases total. Anyway, the first phase, the attacks do not line up with the music. Here's some footage of the second phase not lining up with the music. I really would like to know where these ideas come from. They are not that difficult to disprove, and it really saddens me to see musicians praising this idea. It's so wrong on so many levels, and even when I try to help that theory out and give evidence to support it, it just doesn't hold up. What's worse is these videos are getting millions of views, and my Dark Soul video barely got over a thousand, which I'm grateful for, but these channels are unfortunately spreading false information, so here I am doing my part to help spread some truth out there. So now I pass it off to you. What are your thoughts? Are there arguments that I missed? Let me know down below, and I will see you in the next video.